So risks and benefits, I'm just going to talk very high level. Oil and gas is something that is a hybrid between a tax play and a traditional investment. Whereas solar, which many of you have looked at, is mostly about the tax savings, right? If you put in money into, into solar, probably two thirds of your return are going to come from tax savings and one third over many years from revenue. With, with oil and gas, it's more heavily weighted toward the investment side. So what are the benefits? The first one is tax savings. For every dollar that you put into oil and gas, uh, you're going to receive a deduction. We have here greater than 90%. In practice, it's usually going to be even greater than 100% for some nuanced regulatory reasons. For every dollar you put in, you're typically going to be able to deduct around $1.07. That's a deduction. Uh, so you then need to multiply that by your marginal rate, right? So if you make, let's say a million dollars and let's, let's say a hundred thousand dollars to keep it simpler without those excess business loss limits. If you make a hundred thousand dollars and you invest a hundred thousand dollars in oil and gas, you can take a deduction basically equal to your whole income. That's going to save you typically somewhere in the range of 30, 40, 50% of that in tax savings, depending on your marginal rate. If your marginal federal rate is 32% and you're paying tax in a high tax state, let's say it's 8%, then your marginal rate is 40, which means for every dollar you can deduct, you're saving 40 cents. With oil and gas, if you put it, if you put in hundred thousand dollars, you're typically getting about half of that back as tax savings right away. That goes to two things that I want to talk about. One is, I'm just looking back at the, the questions here. Um, where'd this one go? Capital gains, are capital gains another category separate from active and passive? Um, no, the capital gains are treated the same, so you can write them off. How valuable oil and gas is will be affected by the character of your income to the extent that your marginal rate is different, right? If you're dedu taking a $100,000 deduction against capital gains, you're saving maybe 20% in taxes, maybe 30% in high tax states. Whereas if you're using it to write off ordinary income, you're saving as much as 50 something percent. So that does matter, but you can use it against either. So tax savings are the first big benefit. The second big benefit, and actually in terms of total size, bigger benefit here is the investment return. This is, in addition to being a tax move, also a traditional investment. You're putting money into a fund that is investing in a portfolio of oil and gas wells. And whether you outperform the market or not depends in part on how that investment performs. You're setting a floor on your return equal to your tax savings, right? If you put in a hundred and this goes to uh, someone's question who asked about principal, I'm not, is the principal safe? That was pretty cool. Is the, is the principal safe? It's going into an investment like any other, but your tax savings are typically going to equal about half of your principal. And so half of your principal is locked in as a return. But the rest of it is going to come from, from an income stream. We have historical numbers here. As I said, new drilling is likely to yield, and as Farhan talked about, is likely to yield higher returns than historical. But if you look at the historical numbers, you're typically getting, your, getting back to even combining tax savings and uh, investment returns within the first couple of years. You're then having a long tail of returns as the, the wells continue to produce over the years. That's going to get smaller and smaller as more of the oil or gas has been pulled out of the well. The production is decreasing. But overall, you're going to yield significant, on average, significant investment returns that are going to add up with the tax savings to feed the market. Yeah. So just to add more colors to this on the tax savings pieces that Jeff has mentioned that you're, if you're putting in a dollar, you're getting in a more than a dollar worth of deduction. That's one. The good part here is that you are able to get 90% or more of it in year one. So if you're putting in a dollar, you can get 90, 92, 93 cents in year one and can use the deduction against your active income. So you don't, it's not a straight line. You don't have to wait 10 years or you're getting into $10,000 a year. If you're putting under thousand dollars, you can get 90 plus thousand dollars worth of deduction and can use it against your ordinary income. It's valuable more as Jeff has mentioned. It's a higher marginal tax rate if you use it against ordinary income compared to capital gains tax, but it's your choice. 
on the investment return side of as a Jeff has mentioned, the useful life of these equipment is goes on for more than 20 years. They produce cash flow. And for as long as it's economically viable, so the fund wants to make sure that there is a cost of chemicals, extraction, and everything reaches. So they want to make sure if they are extracting all, it has to be profitable. They're not going out of their pocket. Historically, what we have seen in terms of the cash flow that other than the depreciation you took, that 90 cents and whatever the delta is, if it's 107, then additional 17 cents. Other than that, you are able to get your money out of it over the course of four to five years. So cash on cash return, you got the deduction, that's a side. You are able to get your principal out of it. So if that's a good set. Now, it depends oil and gas prices, which is variable, highly volatile, geopolitics and all that. But historically, people have been able to get their principal out of it. Now, as I mentioned, the useful life of the equipment is you know, 20 plus years. So you're going to get cash flow for the useful life of the equipment. But it's economical. But the first couple of years are very aggressive. So they extract oil and gas. And the first couple of years are very aggressive. And that's why you are able to get the maximum yield out of it in, in first couple of years. And then the cash flow goes down as it gets depleted. But it's very high in the first couple of years. I'll, no, sorry, Jeff, go ahead. I know. Yeah, yeah that, that's really helpful. There are a couple of questions that, that, that go, go to some of this stuff. So I, I want to keep talking and then I'll pull the questions in as we go. Someone asked about whether the income is taxable. Jim Jim asked, why is the return tax free? And Profool asked, is the income taxable? Those are opposite assumptions. The answer is it's actually mostly taxed with a small deduction. So we, you see here an income stream. The income is taxable. You get 15% of it is deductible. And so you're going to pay tax on 85% of the income. All of the returns that we'll show you in the calculators, in our case studies, is post-tax and post-fees. So that's already accounted for, um, but it is taxable income. Another the, view, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, no. yeah, so another thing here is, so first Jeff mentioned, yes, the first 15% is deductible. You, if you take a deduction in year one, 90%, you have about 17 cents left over in depreciation deduction that have a seven year schedule that's gonna come from. So you, if you don't want to use that deduction against your other income, you could take that deduction and offset the income that has been generated by oil and gas. So if you add it up, it goes around 30-ish percent. That is not tax if you use that deduction and then the rest of it's taxes. And, and, and let me also pull in Mike's question here, which is related to Farhan. He asks, does it matter when during the year you invest for the deduction? And the answer, right, is no. Your deduction is calendar year. So if you invest any time this year, you'll get to claim that full deduction this year. Also, I'll, I'll pull up one more question. Jim asks, can you carry back? Unfortunately, with oil and gas, the answer is no. That's so, that so one thing. Jim, to call out here is depreciation is something that can only go forward. It cannot go backward, whatever it is. Tax credits can go backward, which is not a part of oil and gas, but depreciation from any form of it that I can think of cannot go backward. It can only go forward. That's right. Um, other benefits, these are soft and, and under predictable, understandable. We told you there's no material participation or entity set up here. This makes oil and gas much quicker and easier. I'll talk about process on the next slide. And this is just, this is a diversification play, right? In addition to the tax savings, this is something that's not typically correlated with the broader markets. Um, and so if you have a diversified portfolio, this is one way to get additional and correlated diversification. We wanna make sure we, we spend time talking about risks. Farhan has already talked about the technology and the reduced risk of underperforming wells, but that is the main risk here. Um, uh, th there's really not much else, right? You, your tax savings are statutory. They're written down. There's not much of a risk there. You don't need to do anything to get those. The big risk is what if the oil wells underperform? And that's where historical returns can help give you some, some comfort. The tax savings can help give you additional comfort, right? The floor on this return is pretty high as compared to another risky investment, right? You're going to get half your money back as tax savings. And then the technology has helped make it so that the returns are expected to be higher uh, over time. And a few things to add here, Jeff, when it comes to risk, there are two pieces of it. So there's tax savings, which is coming in a form of depreciation. 
and there is a cash flow that's coming. Now the tax savings piece of it, the depreciation that's coming, it's statutory, it's written in the tax code. So completely safe. It's not that IRS is coming back and, and asking why did you took it. And, and, and also importantly, Farhan, doesn't depend on performance, right? The well should be completely dry, you yeah. still get your tax savings. And, and that question, and, and thank you for raising this, Jeff, that question has come up a lot in terms of people ask, what if they don't find anything? These are very big funds. We're talking about nine figures here. And there's a fair amount of diligence and research in place because they have been doing this for a very long time. So this is not their first time. And as men Jeff mentioned, it's a diversified portfolio. So it's not a one well who's going to be allocated towards Jeff's name. And if they don't find anything, they're just going to come back to Jeff and say, we couldn't find anything. You took the deduction. That's it. Bye-bye. These are hundreds of wells. So fun invest in all together, and these are hundreds of wells. So the odds of they finding, not finding anything, it's just significantly, I would say it's zero. They're going to find something. Now the cash flow depends, like I said, it's volatile based on the oil and gas prices. It's not that they're not going to find anything at all. If worst case scenario, they don't, you still got the deduction. You took it, you have more than a dollar worth of deduction that you took on this asset. Thank you.